I never, I've never read it. I, came, I was probably aware of it 10 years after it was written. And it's been going on 20 years that people have pestered me about this, and uh, CNN does it every single time. So well, when are you going to wear yourself I mean, out? When you say it's a, no, but when are you, you going to do that? Is it legitimate? I mean, is it a legitimate question to ask that something yeah. went out? And when and you get the name, and when so you get the answer, it's legitimate that you uh, sort of take the answers I get. You know what the answer is? I, I didn't read, write them. I didn't read them at the time, and I disavow them. That is the answer. But you made money off of it. Center that kind yeah. of thing. All right, all right. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate your okay, answer. Sir. I appreciate your answering the questions, and you understand it's our job to Thank answer. You. Thank you. You don't? Okay. Well, I understand that uh, our system works. I would like to believe that if we have a freer society, it will take care of blacks and whites and everybody equally because we're all individuals. And to me, that is so important. But if we had equal justice under the law, I think it would be a big improvement. If we had a probably a repeal of most of the federal t uh, laws on drugs and the unfairness on how blacks are treated with these drug laws, it would be a tremendous improvement. Congressman Paul. A system designed to protect individual liberty will have no punishments for any group and no, uh, no privileges. Today, I think inner city folks uh, and minorities are punished unfairly in the war on drugs. For instance, uh, blacks make up 14 percent of those who use drugs, yet 36 percent of those arrested are blacks, and it ends up that 63 percent of those who finally end up in prison are blacks. This has to change. We don't have to have more courts and more prisons. We need to repeal the whole war on drugs. It isn't working. We're spend, we have already spent over $400 billion since the early 70s, and it's a wasted money. Prohibition didn't work. Prohibition on drugs doesn't work. So we need to come to our senses, and absolutely, it's a disease. We don't treat alcoholics like this. This is a disease, and we should orient ourselves to this. That is one way you could have equal justice under the law. Thank you, Congressman. The next question will be asked. Congressman Paul's support has gradually been slipping for the death penalty among all Americans. The Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life reports a large majority of whites still support capital punishment, while blacks and Latinos do not. Now, I know this is mostly a state function, but the president does appoint appellate judges and, of course, the highest appellate judges in the land, the Supreme Court justices who often review death penalty cases. Do you think the death penalty is carried out justly in the United States? And do you want to see it continued during your presidency? 30 seconds, Congressman. You know, over the years, I've held pretty rigid all my beliefs, but I've changed my opinion about the death penalty. For federal purposes, I no longer believe in the death penalty. I believe it has been issued unjustly. If you're rich, you get away with it. If you're poor and you're from the inner city, you're more likely to be uh, prosecuted and convicted. And uh, today, uh, with the DNA evidence, there's been too many mistakes. So I am now opposed to the federal death penalty. Thank you, Congressman. Senator Brownback. I'm not a racist. Matter of fact, Rosa Parks is one of my heroes. Martin Luther King is a hero because they practice the libertarian principle of civil disobedience, nonviolence. Libertarians are incapable of being a racist because uh, racism is a collectivist idea. You see people in group. A, a civil libertarian like myself see everybody as an important individual. It's not the color of their skin that is important, as Martin Luther King said. What is important is the character of, of the individual. You know what is really interesting, though, and this might be behind this, because I, as a Republican candidate, probably am getting the most number of black votes and black supporters, and now that has to be undermined. And I do this because I attack two wars that blacks are suffering from. One, the war overseas. In all wars, minorities suffer the most. So they join me in this position I have against the war in Iraq. And what about the war on drugs? What other candidate will stand up and fright in the can and say, I would pardon all blacks, all whites, everybody who are convicted for nonviolent violent drug acts and drug crimes. Ooh. And this is where the real discrimination is. Let me finish this uh, because I got to get my message back because you put the other message out. 
Now, when, uh, uh, when the, if you want to look for discrimination, it's in the judicial system. 14% of the inner city blacks commit drug crime. 67% of blacks are in prison. That's discrimination. That's the judicial code, code that I am attacking. And that is not racism. What I defend is the principle of libertarianism, where we never see people who belong to a group, and every individual is defended and protected because they're important and individual, not because of their color of skin, but of their character. So I am the anti-racist because I am the only candidate, Republican or Democrat, who would protect the minority against these vicious drug laws.